Cybertruck Q&A, roll one, scene one, take one. Am I sitting awkwardly? <laughs> Holding paper. How did Kaz do this? Hey guys, I'm glad you've enjoyed our half-scale Cybertruck build. If you guys haven't seen the complete build series, we have a four-part series with over 60 minutes of content going over the engineering and manufacture of this half-scale Cybertruck. It's by far one of our most favorite projects and one of the ones we're most proud of. With me is Bogdan, our lead designer on the project, and we've collected a whole bunch of questions from both Instagram and YouTube, and we thought we'd do a little Q&A to talk a bit more about how this came to life. Okay, so the first question we have is, are you going to certify it to drive it on the road legally? So to certify this to actually legally drive it on the road with insurance and a real license plate, it's probably possible, but it would be a lot of work. Uh, you see, the issue is, because we made it half scale, it's missing quite a few safety features that are, are required to actually license a vehicle. So while we could do it, I don't think we're going to because it's not really a safe vehicle to uh, use on an everyday basis. And it would also probably cost a ton of money to insure considering it's a half scale Cybertruck. Yeah, well, we're missing uh, seat belts. We don't have any airbags. There's no side view mirrors. Um, Currently, turn signals are not uh, a feature, neither are brake lights, uh, and there's no crumple zone. Um, so all of those would have to be added on to actually get it certified, which wouldn't be hard to do, but it would take a lot of time, extra money, and really wouldn't make this any more cool than it already is. And also one of my favorite parts, the, the whole, you can see, when you're driving, you, you can see the driver's leg right here. Because, because the cab is so small, your feet literally almost go all the way to the front of the vehicle. So actually your legs are the crumple zone, which is not a good way to design a car. So it's probably not ideal for uh, legal road use. Plus uh, it has no doors. Speaking of which, why didn't we put doors in, Bogdan? Well, the thing is, even if we did put doors, they'd be extremely tiny and you couldn't really fit it through them in, in the first place. And actually making doors is a big design challenge, like getting everything to align properly, making them sturdy and having the forces of the car distributed while having huge holes to get in and out of is actually quite difficult and would have made this whole project a lot more time consuming and a lot more expensive. Yeah, we probably would have spent hundreds of hours just on the design of the door alone, which we're a YouTube channel, not a full out engineering company yet. All right, so speaking of safety, um, can we add turn signals? Yeah, so the actual LEDs on the entire car are addressable, which means we can actually program it to have turn signals, to have brake lights, um, and even to have like party modes, like police mode or uh, dance mode and stuff like that, and make it act to music if we wanted to. But there, that's a lot of extra work to actually program it in. We'd need to add all the switches on the, uh, on the steering wheel. And while we could do it and it wouldn't be that hard, it would take extra time. And considering we wanted to get this out to you as soon as possible, we decided not to for the time being. But it is a future upgrade. So is it actually half scale? Yeah, so this is one of the most common questions we've gotten asked. And it is technically half scale. It just depends how you're looking at it. So basically, we halved all the external dimensions of the real Cybertruck in half. The length, the width, and the height. So it is half size on a piece of paper. But because this is a 3D world and the car is 3D, that actually means the volume of a car, if you scale the dimensions in half, is actually one eighth. So maybe it's actually one eighth scale. Either way, it's the only one half or one eighth scale Tesla on the road. Something we didn't actually touch on in the video, I don't think, is the material we made the windows out of. Bogdan, can you tell us a bit about the material? So the windows are actually made out of polycarbonate, which is actually a really, really strong plastic using real bulletproof glass. And it's pretty impact resistant. So I'm not sure if it'll actually stop uh, large caliber bullets, but for everything from rocks to large metal balls, it'll have no problem absorbing and blocking from penetrating. And if you guys haven't seen polycarbonate in action, you should check out our video on breaking into an unbreakable box, which is uses, uses the same material as our Cybertruck windows. And as you can see, it's, uh, it's pretty tough. Speaking of our bulletproof windows, is the rest of the car bulletproof? So the rest of the car is actually made out of three millimeter or eighth inch stainless steel. It's only 304 L alloy, um, but it should be able to withstand quite a good hit. Like small calibers, potentially nine mil. Again, unfortunately, we didn't have time to do that for our test video, but maybe in a future video, we'll uh, take it to the gun range and put some holes in it yeah. or not put some holes in it. 
Yeah, so the, the real Cybertruck is made out of uh, 30 times cold rolled, so it is a little bit tougher. But in terms of the thickness, even though it's a half-scale Cybertruck, we didn't uh, make the material thinner in order to ensure the rigidity of the vehicle. Yeah, the, the body of the, our half-scale Cybertruck is the same thickness as the real Cybertruck, which is pretty cool. OK, so why do we not build it full scale? I've seen this question a lot. Uh, personally, I feel like building a full-scale Cybertruck would be a lot less original. And the other issue with doing a full-scale replica is everyone, including you guys, would expect us to have every single feature as the real car, which would be really, really freaking expensive. If you can imagine actually building the entire car just like Tesla did it, it would probably cost us millions of dollars because that's the cost of prototyping a real vehicle. So besides building it half scale, we're able to cut the cost down and the material cost down. It's also more unique and more original, I think, and kind of a cool twist on it. And to be honest, we were actually planning on making it smaller originally. When the Cybertruck was first announced, uh, I pre-ordered it, obviously. And then a few days later, we, we got talking. We're like, you know, it'd be really cool to build a mini Cybertruck that we could put in the back of the real Cybertruck when we get it. Anyways, we looked at the size of the bed of the truck, and we realized we'd have to make it like the size of a small like go-kart. And we thought, that's kind of lame. And then when we talked to Accelerated Systems Inc. about getting some motors and whatnot, we realized doing a golf cart sized one was a lot more realistic. So we decided to do that instead and ended up on the half scale version. Yeah, and ASI's motors are actually meant to go on golf carts. So the actual electronic system and actually mounting all the components was really, really easy with their system. Exactly. And the other thing with going full scale, it would have cost a lot more material and the fabrication time would have gone through the roof. Our car wouldn't have even been done by the time the real one released if we were doing a full scale one, which kind of defeats the purpose because then it wouldn't be the only real or the only full scale one. Yeah. Yeah. So if there's, we there's been other YouTubers who have made full scale versions, but they have limited their scope of what they actually did. And really it was more of a cosmetic full scale version as opposed to a full out replica, which is what we tried to do here. Well, that was almost political. That was a great answer. Yeah. So in our last video, we didn't actually show too much about how our iPad app actually works. So Vardin, can you explain a little bit about how you actually coded that to replicate a real Cybertruck dash? Right. So the actual app is pretty simple. Uh, it runs on HTML, just a web page that we're hosting. Uh, and the actual web page, when you press buttons, it runs some JavaScript code to just make HTTP requests to an ESP32-based Arduino inside the vehicle. So basically, it's just listening to the uh, request for the HTTP using a handler. And then based on that, it runs some code to trigger relays and whatnot, or responds back with a HTTP 200 command and just gives back all the information for the, the CAN bus and all of the, uh, the settings and stuff. So in layman terms, it's basically just a website where when you click on something, the Arduino does the other thing. So we've mentioned that we, the Cybertruck costs us almost $50,000 to make. How come? Yep. Uh, well, the, the main fact is prototyping can be super expensive. We've put thousands of hours of labor into this. And in case you guys don't know, this YouTube channel is actually a business. And everyone you see in the videos is actually a paid employee. So once you add up all the hourly rates of everyone, the overhead of this facility, and everything else, we're looking at over $40,000 just in labor to build this. Add that on to the $10,000 worth of parts, and bam, we're at $50,000, or more than a real Cybertruck. Now, I know you guys must be thinking, how can it be more than a real Cybertruck? You can get a full-size truck for $39,900 today off the web. Well, not today. They'll be out in 2021, maybe 2022. Anyways, Tesla's Cybertruck probably actually cost millions of dollars to make the first prototype. Like I said, prototyping anything is super expensive. Doing one of anything, tons of money. Once Tesla spends another couple hundred million dollars building up an assembly line, they'll be able to bring the price down to $39,000 a unit, which is really cool. And that kind of like gives you some perspective on how much we take for granted for mass production. Like the only reason we can have vehicles for under 100 grand each, which is still expensive, um, is because of mass production, because companies are making thousands or tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of vehicles. As you guys saw in our test video, we managed to out-torque a full-size F-150 with our half-scale Cybertruck. That's that, pretty freaking cool. That even surprised us. Like, yeah. we, we were like unsure. Like We knew it had the numbers lined up, but we were like, it, just seeing it beside the full-size truck, it was just scary. Like It was ridiculous, the size difference. And you can't even imagine how much like power 
a little thing like this could actually have. And, and, and that's because electric motors are actually really torquing naturally, and even at low speeds. Unlike a gas combustion engine, which needs to be at a specific RPM to achieve maximum torque, uh, electric motors give that torque instantly at basically any RPM. And in our case, the front motors on our Cybertruck are actually designed for low speed, high torque applications. The rear motor is actually a more high speed motor, but it's actually fed through a 13 to one differential, um, which gives the back end a ton of torque as well. So if you actually add it all up, we have 2,410 Newton meters of torque available at both the front and rear axle in total. Um, in foot pounds, that's 1,777. That's, that's crazy. That's, yeah, that's a giant. That's foot possibly more than the real Cybertruck. Yeah. yeah. But the trade off, it doesn't go that fast. We didn't actually show you guys how fast this goes, but uh, the top speed is a bit less than uh, highway, highway speeds. Yeah. So, anyways, we rushed to get this all out within the, the two months we've been posting videos, but there's still room for improvement, and there's quite a few features that we still want to add to this to make it even a bit like bit nicer, including things like uh, the tonneau cover, or the, like the, the truck bed cover, the rollout cover that the real Cybertruck has. And it's already in the app as well. Like we got all the controls for it, we just need to yeah, spec one and relay. mount it on. Um, also, maybe a winch in the front because it is a truck. Why not? Give it some power. And in uh, the back. And definitely some cameras as well, maybe so we don't have to lift the lid to look behind when we're reversing. And then, uh, we actually have a bit of a partnership with ClearPath Robotics, which happens to do unmanned vehicle driving. So there's a chance we could actually use one of their self-driving modules to actually give this autopilot, which I think would be pretty cool. So make sure you're uh, keep an eye out for the future Cybertruck videos. And of course, maybe a sound system so we can have some tunes while we're driving. Anyway, this project uh, represents one of the most complicated and so far, pretty expensive projects we've ever taken here at Hacksmith Industries, and we couldn't have done it without the entire team and several volunteers who came out and helped us during the build, including Craig from Hamilton, he's a uh, stainless steel fabricator, Aaron from Stratford, who helped us with the welding, my friend Evan, our new high school co-op Tyler, several former employees, including Charles, who worked on the electronics, and Ben, who also helped with electronics, as well as Ben's dad for some SOLIDWORKS help. And Adam, one of our actual past employees, came to help with the brake system. So big thank you to you guys for helping with this project, because we probably couldn't have done it without you. Anyway, this is the first time we've done a Q&A video on our project. Let us know if you liked that uh, in the comments below. We'd love to start doing this for every project to give the people who are really interested in knowing a bit more about the engineering that goes into these projects a bit more info. Anyways, thanks for watching. And uh, if you guys haven't subscribed to this channel yet, it's our vlog channel where we try and post behind the scenes content of everything that happens here at Hacksmith Industries.